Bible and look at the book of Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter number 14. And uh, I'll be honest, I had another message in mind. And uh, I don't know, have no idea, but this one just uh, driving home late last night. And all you got to do, you either listen to music or, or you know, whatever. And, and so I'm sitting there thinking... And this is where our minds go to. Matthew chapter 14, and let's look at verse number 22. If you have a Bible, that's fine. If not, we've got it up here for you. You'll be able to follow along. I want to read in verse number 22. Are you there? Say amen. amen. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him into the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. Now, he had just fed the 5,000, that's the multitudes he's told me, just fed the 5,000 men, women, and children with the five loaves and two fishes. You know that story. So he's already just done that, and he tells his disciples to get in the ship, go to the other side while I send all these folks away. And in verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth night of the, or excuse me, the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Fourth night, the fourth watch of the night is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. That's the fourth watch. So in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying three words, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And six months later, is that what the Bible says? It says, and immediately. Ain't that good? And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they which were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning for the congregational singing, the good spirit that's always here. Lord, I thank you for my friends coming to help me sing and, and, and sort of uh, just enjoy gospel music. And, but Lord, all of that is good. All of that is wonderful. But Lord, the reading of your word is the most, uh, the, the most precious part. And where we get the most blessing, where we get the most help, is from your book. Lord, I pray right now for these that have listened. I don't even know where this sermon's going to go, but Lord, I pray that it would fall on fertile ground and produce fruit for your honor and your glory. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, let me paint the picture for you. He's feeding the 5,000. You know the story. The little lad brought a five, lo or five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus took that and he prayed, and uh, he broke the bread, and he passed it out, and that five loaves and two fishes fed 5,000 men, plus the wives, plus the children. So I don't know how many people were there, but when it's all said and done, had 12 baskets left over. You say, well, why? Because there was 12 disciples passing it out. They had to eat. And so he does all of this. Now watch, just stay with me right here. He breaks the bread and he's passing it out and say, hey, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. And then 
The Lord says disciples. Y'all see that little boat right there? I want y'all to get in that ship. I want y'all to go to the other side and I'll meet you over there. You just go on over to the other side and I'm going to send these folks away. He sent the folks away. He goes up to a high mountain to pray. While the disciples are in a ship, they're going through a storm about midway through there and the Lord is in a high mountain apart to pray. I wonder who he was praying for. Lord, I know them birds down there. I'm telling you, they're going to be in that storm. And Lord God, I just pray for them right. Boy, he's up there praying. And when they're in the midst of the storm, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. Now, now just get this. This ain't the sermon. I ain't got to the sermon yet, but get this right here. The things that trouble you, the things that frighten you, the things that... Uh, scare you, the things that are boisterous to you, the winds and the waves are getting in the boat, and the things that bother you the most, Jesus has it under his feet. Let me get over here to the Pentecostal side. <laughs> I said that last night, in, no, it's Friday night in the youth revival, and uh, they invited uh, a, a group to sing, you know, and uh, they were sitting on, on this side. And, and I didn't know, but they were Pentecostal. <laughs> and they were on the front row. And you know, I just do that just to keep attention. And, keep, and so I went to this side of that church. I said, let me go to the Pentecostal side. And they're like, no, we're over here. <laughs> so the things that trouble you, the things that bother you, Jesus uses it at a runway and walks on what we're afraid of. And so Jesus came to them, of course, the, you know, the clouds and the fog and the rain and the lightning and the storm and all of that. And they're like, uh, we're afraid because it looks like a spirit. Now, Jesus said this. Jesus said, don't be afraid. It is, it is I. Be not afraid. It is I. Now, I ain't preaching on this either, but boy, it sure would be good. The I of the storm. The eye of the storm is where the uh, storm, whatever the meteorologists, boy, they look. And to study a storm, you have to study the eye. Because the eye is the center of the storm. The eye is the control of the storm. Mm, I may preach this. <clears throat> when Hurricane Katrina, no, it wasn't Hurricane, it was a, a tornado. Uh, and I forgot which one it was, but a tornado came through and they was doing this live thing on television and this, he was doing an interview, said, boy, the tornado came through last night, scared us half to death. And man, we were in our uh, uh, bathroom in the bathtub, had a mattress over top of us and boy, here we go. And man, it was rumbling and the ceiling sounds like the roof was coming off and all of this. And all of a sudden it got real still. We thought it was over. That's what he said. And then he said, here it come again. What happened was, in that stillness, they were in the eye of the storm where the calm is. So if you ever get in a storm, you need to get close to the eye. And it's calm in there. It's peaceful in there. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm liking this sermon. I wasn't even planning on preaching this one. And so, and, and what I think about is when mama used to get me with a belt, and now dad didn't, dad made you lay across the bed, you didn't have nowhere to go, it was just, you know, that's the way it was. But mom, she did that little square dancing thing, and she'd grab you by the arm, and then we would do this number. Y'all with me? But I figured out, now watch, y'all, you're going to get something out of that. What, the, I figured this out. I figured out the closer I got to mama. <laughs> boy, I'm glad the kids is over there. I find out, man, she's trying to, and if you get farther, man, she can reach, son. But if you get up there real close, I mean, she can't, I mean. So if you're in trouble and you're in a storm, just grab a hold of God. Where the calm is. And that's not even the sermon. 
But I want you to, I want you to get this picture. Jesus feed, I got to get the sermon. Pete, uh, Jesus feed the 5,000. Break the bread. Break it and pass it. Break it and pass it out. And then he goes up to a high mountain apart to pray while the disciples are in the middle of a storm. Get the picture. Watch. Jesus on the cross. His body was broken for you. He said, pass this out. Pass this out. After he arose from the dead, he goes, ascends up. While we are down here in 2021 in the middle of a storm. But when you're in the middle of a storm, we got somebody high on the mountain praying for us. Now listen, if he told you to get in the ship, go to the other side, guess what? I'm going to make it to the other side. No matter how bad the storm is, I'm going to the other side. I may think I'm going down. I may think I'm going under. But he said, go to the other side. I'll meet you on the other side. He's up there right now praying while we're in the middle of a storm. That ain't a sermon either. Now let me get to the sermon. This is what I thought about driving home last night. Peter says, Lord, now, get this. Jesus said, hey, y'all get in the ship, go to the other side. Jesus didn't say, Jesus didn't say, when I, y'all try to impress folks and get out there and walk on, don't just get in the boat. What I like to tell my kids, get somewhere and sit down. But here comes Jesus. Jesus is walking to them on the water. Peter. You know it's got to be Peter. He says, Lord, if it's really you. Why, why? I just told you it was me. Lord, if it's really you, let me get out of here and impress everybody and walk on the water to you. Jesus is like, okay. This is what it means in the Greek. All right. He's a knucklehead. Come on. Peter gets out. He steps out there. He's like, He's got his eyes on the Lord, and then all of a sudden, the thunder and lightning gets worse and bad and storm and water. He takes his eyes off of Jesus, and he starts looking at the storm. And the Bible says he began to sink. Now, get this. It wasn't like an elevator. He takes his eyes off the Lord, and he's like, hmm. And he puts his eyes back on the Lord, whoop, you know. If the Lord's got his hand under there while he's walking on it, if he takes it away, you go. Whoosh. So, for a lack of a better, a, a, a better illustration, Peter starts to drown. He don't. I mean, it just ain't an easy. You know, punch. You know, go to the bottom floor. You know, he goes under, splashes underwater, and now he's bobbling, trying to get back up. Peter is drowning in arm's length of the master of the sea. All across Millsfield, Dyersburg, wherever you come from, there are people all around us in arm's length of this church that's drowning. In arm's length of a good preacher, arm's length of a good Bible-believing church, in arm's length of Jesus Christ, people are drowning and they're engulfed and their marriage is drowning and they're drowning in the world and the, and the flesh and the devil and he's beating them up left and right. And you say, well, preacher, why don't they just tell us we will help them? You don't understand drowning too good. They call it aquatic distress. And when somebody's in aquatic distress, when they're going down and they bobble back up, their first notion is not to holler out at you. Their first notion is, i got to get my next breath. And by the time they get their next breath, they don't have time to holler at you. They're going down again. So from Sunday to Sunday, from Sunday to Wednesday, and Sunday to Wednesday, and Wednesday to Sunday, they're just bobbing up and down, trying to get their next breath. They come to church, and they get another little breath there, and, and they're trying, they're going up and down, up and down. 
You ever been there? Struggling to get your next breath. I read a story of a captain of a ship, one of those cruise ships. You know how they do. If you've ever been on a cruise ship, they pull over at some uh, destination and they let everybody get out there and swim. Some of them have their own little private island, whatever. And so that cruise ship pulls over and boy, the captain's up there and he's taking his break. And all of a sudden he's watching all the families out there and they're swimming and this, that, and the other. And you got a mom and dad and everybody's just out there having a big old time. And then all of a sudden this captain, he's looking out and they're trained for this. And that captain's looking out and all of a sudden he just... Something catches his eye. He goes down. He jumps into that water, and he starts swimming for this mom and dad. And this mom and dad's looking at him like, "What? Well, he must think we're, he must think we're drowning." Yeah, I mean, we're old, we're old, we're fine, we're okay. And they're like, you know, we're okay. He kept swimming. He swims past mom and dad for about ten more feet. Behind mom and dad is their nine-year-old girl, fighting and going down for the last time. Ten foot from their mom and dad, and they didn't know it was happening. There's people that are drowning, and you'll never know it. And they can't cry out for help. They can't cry out for help because they're trying to get their last breath. Their only, their only thing in life is they're trying to get their last breath. They don't know where it's going to come from. And from Sunday to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, just bobbing up and down in this world. And this world's about to drown them to death. Satan is trying to take them down for the last time. So many things that I've looked at and, and people we watch drowning on TV and drowning on TV and drowning on real life is totally different. Drowning on TV, people are splashing and, hey, you know, ho, I need some help, you know, and all of that. Drowning in real life don't happen that way. When they go into that kind of distress mode, they're trying to get their breath, they're bobbing up and down. And if you're not watching, if you don't know what to look for, if you don't know what to look for, they'll go down and you won't never know anything's the difference. Drowning in arm's length of the master of the sea. They say drowning is the silent killer. Most people drown and they die within 25 feet of both parents. And most know, never know anything's ever wrong. You can drown in a safe place. Listen to me real good. This is a total different sermon than what I usually preach and you know it. But I'm trying to help some folks. You can come to church every Sunday, Wednesday night, revival, whatever, and you can still be drowning. You can drown in a safe place. This is a safe place. You can drown with a Bible under your arm. They're going down for the last time. They say 20% of kids drown in public pools with certified lifeguards. That sounds like a church. We're supposed to be certified lifeguards. Amen. We're supposed to know what to look for. When they can't cry out for help, we ought to know what to look for. God, give us discernment. Give us those keen eyes, spiritual eyes, that we can see when they're going down for the last time so we can help them in their time of need. Let me get to this part. You say, have you, got a, have you got a structure? I think I do. Arms length from the Savior, arms length from parents, arms length from the preacher, arms length from a Bible-believing church, arms length from the Bible on the coffee table. People are drowning all around us. Now let me give you these points real quick. There was a problem that was urgent. Would y'all not say if somebody's drowning, it's urgent? A problem that was urgent. Now, this is what my boys are here, and we, you know, youth camp, and, and I don't like this, but some of them did it, and I don't like it. I, it's just something about it. I don't like it. I, I've been, how many of you know where Sun Kiss Beach is in Real Foot Lake? <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, Jamie, you know that. Anyway, uh, and, uh, well, we've been out there. And I remember it was me and Shane and Jeff. We was out there and, uh, and, and wrestling around. 
And ever since then, I told my boss, don't be wrestling in the swimming pool. It's rain gun. We're tough. Well, you don't know that boy you're taking down. You don't know if he got enough air before you took him down. And man, if it happens to me, son, I'm coming preacher and all. I'm coming up swinging. Y'all pray for me. I mean, I'm saved. I just ain't that saved. I'm coming up swinging at somebody. And I remember, I remember Jeff. And I remember he probably don't remember this, but I remember his son kissed beach was right across from uh, uh, Papa Ballinger's house, and we'd walk across there because we didn't have any money to pay to get in the sun kissed beach across the thing. So we'd we'd go over there and swim, and and uh, Jeff thought he could swim, but anyway he couldn't. And uh, man, he was struggling and struggling for his. I mean, just and we, boy, we had to get in there and and get him. And if we wouldn't have been watching. If you don't know what to look for, drowning in arm's length of people you love, people that love you, drowning. It was a problem that was, was urgent, very urgent. Souls, Christ Church Baptist Fellowship, listen to me real good, souls are at stake. Millsville community is at stake. Dyersburg, Tennessee is at stake. There's people drowning, and we're supposed to be the lifeguards. Number two, the proximity was underestimated. You have a problem that was urgent, but the proximity was underestimated. Peter thought he was close enough, but can I say this? You can never be too close to the Lord. They thought he was close enough. He thought he was. I remember, uh, don't you remember this? We was at Joe Hickerson's in Atwood, Tennessee. He was a deacon at uh, the church there, and they had an uh, in-ground swimming pool, and they worked during the day, and they would invite us to come over and say, hey, it's sitting there, use it. Boy, we'd go over there and use it. Man, we, we took advantage of that, got, went in, got it and fixed us a bologna sandwich, whatever, and uh, got in that swimming pool, and the boys, they'd be swimming, you know. And Kayla, Kayla was probably two. And uh, Kayla had them floaties on, you know, how you do. And when the kink swim and uh, we're on the shallow end, the boys are out there swimming, you know, doing good. And Kayla's over there. And you know how kids do. They won't take their floaties off. I can do it. I can do it. You're, you're just right here. I can do it. And then finally you give in say, all right, you take your floaties off. Just stay, stay right here on this step where you can touch. Y'all with me? And they take their floaties off. And then, you know, you're like, okay, well, they're, they're smart enough to know not to step off and step. And you're doing something else. And all of a sudden, I turned around. I mean, just like that. Just like that. She then stepped off a bottom step. And now, she can't touch bottom. I remember this like it was yesterday. And I remember her rolling over. And the face of terror. That she was looking at me, scared to death. So I reached down in there, grabbed whatever I grabbed, and jerked them up. Don't that sound like salvation? <laughs> when the Savior reached down, for me. <laughs> when we were going down for the last time, He reaches down. That look of terror. God, I can't do it without you. I need you. I'm going down. I don't have another breath. And just in the nick of time. <laughs> don't ever think you're too close. There was a problem. It was urgent. The proximity was underestimated. But let me give you this third one. Watch this one. This is a funny one. There were people who were unaware. There were people around who were unaware. You say, preacher, prove it. Tell me somebody of the other disciples that jumped in to help Peter. Name them. Everybody's like, well, it's been nice knowing Peter. He was a good old soul. We ain't going in there to help him. <laughs> who jumped in to help him? Either they didn't know or they wasn't paying attention or they didn't know what to look for. There were people that weren't aware. 
and I'm, I'm not, I'm saying this out of, out, of, out of sincere heart, me included, sometimes there's people that we come in contact with, they're drowning, and we don't know. And let me say, let me get, I usually don't get real, real personal, but look, we don't know what people went through to get to church today. We don't know where kids came from to get to church. We've had kids that we pick up on the bus and they come in here. No telling the drowning atmosphere they come from. And it's our job. <laughs> when they look up, they don't know any better. That's our job to reach down and pick them up. It's a problem, Sammy, that was urgent. There was a proximity that was underestimated. There were people that were unaware. And my last point, no amens, please. There was a person there that understood. There was a person there that understood. Y'all see the picture? Peter's going down. He's under the water. And Peter, here he goes. Can y'all hear Peter praying? Our Father, the Lord God of heaven, that created the stars and the planets and the Milky Way, the God that moves heaven and earth. He didn't pray all that. He said, Preacher, I don't know how to pray. Can you say three words? Preacher, I don't know how to pray. I can't pray. Can you say three words? Peter, real simple. Nothing extravagant. Nothing elaborate. Nothing big. It was urgent. Lord, save me. And just in the nick of time. Linda, are y'all going to see this afternoon? Okay. Just a little, I don't know how many months ago we went to see the, uh, what was it called? Uh, Jesus. And this was one of the sins. And I don't know how they did it, you know. I ain't trying to run it for you, but you need to go see it. Man, Peter's going down. <laughs> and Jesus, man, he picks him up and locks arms with him like this and pulls him up out of the storm, pulls him up out of that water. Three words, Lord, save me. Your home life in a mess, Lord, save me. Marriage in a mess, Lord, save me. Your church in a mess, Lord, save me. It don't matter if you're saved, if you're lost, if you go to church, if you don't go to church all the time, it don't make any difference. If you get away from him, you can still drown. But there's a person that understands, and his name is Jesus, and I've tried to paint a picture to him this morning. He'll reach further down. What's the song we sing? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am i we sing it all the time because why people are drowning what's the song we sing sometimes when the savior reached down for me when he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without God or his son. When he reached down his hand for me, whatever you need, Lord, save me. Sammy slipped to the piano. Let's all stand.
all of the building. I just, I feel like we just need to do this right here. Lord, save me. Sammy's victory start playing. Whatever, don't make a difference. Church, you feel like you're going down, just trying to make it from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to bobbing up and down, and the world's got you beat. Peter's in the Bible. Peter wrote books in the Bible and almost drowned. Lord, save me.